Hello and uh, welcome to the latest episode of the Good Ram Show with me, Chris Goodram. Okay, as per usual, a big thank you to everybody that uh, watched last week's episode, the show, commented, all that kind of stuff. Um, I will catch up with uh, uh, all the comments and reply, reply to them, um, hopefully, uh, over, over the weekend. Um, so, you know, just uh, bear with me if I haven't replied as yet. Um, so, um, this week, I... I fancied doing something a little bit different, and I fancied doing something American. I haven't done an American episode of the show for a, a, a long time, so before we kind of get into the nitty gritty of it, I suppose, um, the disclaimer for today is that all of these samples do come from 2014 and 2015 when I was uh, doing the new releases tastings for the Whiskey Magazine. So. Um, they may not be indicative of the of the current releases from these particular distilleries and and because I've got six of them I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail about the individual distilleries themselves um, and because you've got their their websites and uh, you can you can check out their their information and as a lot of you guys are actually from the states that watch the show you probably know of these distilleries anyway but um, I guess that there's two reasons for doing this this particular episode of the show firstly um is that there's still i think um there's still a kind of belief i guess um uh, wrongly i would say that uh, um uh, american whiskey begins and ends in kentucky you know the the, the the that's all there is to to american whiskey it's all bourbon you know um when you know and i think sort of a lot of the you know, consumers that are not don't particularly aren't particularly knowledgeable about the industry believe that, uh, and of course we know that's completely different. Uh, and across the whole of America, there are you know an, a number of uh, smaller craft distilleries, I guess, and I mean you know you could argue that sort of you know, twenty odd years ago the sort of th that was kind of true, I suppose. You know that. that it, American whiskey was all about bourbon, but and and it was only then that sort of you know about twenty years ago the first of the sort of like what they called the you know the craft distilleries, craft breweries started cropping up, and nowadays uh, they're they're everywhere. I mean you know here in the UK you know there there are an inordinate number of 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 you know small breweries, micro breweries, that kind of thing, and the market is really vibrant. It's a great scene, um, and. You know, you can say the same for sort of like, you know, um, micro and sort of craft. I mean, I hate all these these names, but, you know, small distilleries that are sort of set up in, in the USA and, and are at the sort of like the forefront of, of you know, trying out different things. So, um, yeah, it's kind of like, you know, trying to sort of introduce a few of these... Um, a few of these distilleries while I still have the samples. Uh, and the second is th reason for doing this week's episode, so it kind of comes back to the whole transparency concept. Um, uh, you're probably wondering what the hell I'm talking about. Well, uh, one of the whiskies we're looking at today uh, is from uh, uh, Strahanans uh, in Colorado. And um, back in, I think it was about 2014, 2015, which is when this sample comes from, I'm not talking about this particular sample, um, the, the chap behind the distillery, uh, Jess uh, Grazer, I believe his name is, um, launched a, a product called Tin Cup. Um, and uh, it, it was an American, it's called an American whiskey, but it also prominently features the, the name Colorado on the label. Um, and so you think, well, okay, this guy owns Strahanans in Colorado, must be from Colorado, must be a Colorado whiskey. But in actual fact, it's not. It's an American whiskey, and only a proportion of the uh, spirit came from Strahanans, the rest coming from MGP. Now, in itself, it's not an issue. You know, there are a number of brands that uh, are made by MGP or feature um, spirit distilled by MGP. Um, you know, sort of Dickel being a classic example, um, and um, Bullet Rye, for example, is another one. Um, so that wasn't the, the, the whole issue. The whole issue was the the opacity, the fact that it appeared to claim to be a Colorado whiskey when, in actual fact, the, probably the bulk of the spirit was distilled. You know, nowhere near Colorado. Um, and I guess, I suppose, if the whiskey had been really, really good, you know, nobody would have really cared. But in actual fact, it wasn't really that good at all. Certainly not the, the, the sample that I tasted anyway. And it kind of 
leads on, like I said, to the whole opacity thing. Um, I mean, for example, you have um, uh, Whistlepig. Uh, now, Whistlepig buys Spirit from Canada, or did, um, ages it for three years in, in America, and, well, oh, bingo, suddenly it's an American Spirit. Well, how does that work? It, it wasn't produced in America, it's just spent some time there, you know. And then you have Japan. I mean, Japan is even worse. I mean, I don't even think that you have to actually age your spirit in Japan. You know, as long as it's bottled in Japan, it's Japanese whiskey. And you sort of, I think, well, hang on, something's not right here, you know. And they're not doing anything illegal. It, so the, the problem lies within the legislation, the framework. Um, and if it was me, I would have divided it into two. So I would have had, for example, Japanese distilled whiskey was a category and Japanese bottled whiskey, a completely separate category. And I'm surprised that the Japanese distillers don't do that. I would have done the same in, um, in America. I'd have probably gone even further and had, you know, uh, the designation of Colorado distilled whiskey, for argument's sake, and Colorado bottled whiskey, Kentucky distilled whiskey, etc., etc. You see where I'm getting at? And, and I think nowadays with a lot more, you know, producers, distillers, you know, started by people like, you know, Brickladdy and um, uh, Compass Box and carried on, you know, by a, you know, a number of the newer distilleries, um, that, you know, they want to say to, to, to the customers, look, you know, this is where everything comes from. This is where our grain comes from. This is where our, our casks come from. Um, you know, even down to sort of like, you know, what, what colour underwear the distiller was wearing the day that it was distilled. You know, and I mean, a lot of this information is kind of like, you know, um, really for geeks only. But the point being is that, that it seems to me that these distilleries are proud of what they're doing and want to tell everybody about you know everything about it you know what the makeup is cask wise all that kind of stuff and you know the more information the better you know there's no need for opacity and i think the reason why you have this opacity is the big boys are basically afraid of giving away trade secrets who cares if we know what Johnny Walker is made from? We can figure it out, you know. We don't know the exact sort of blend uh, of, of, say, Johnny Walker back label. You can hazard a guess. And even if you did recreate it, you can't call it Johnny Walker black label. You have to call it something else, you know. And it's So why why the necessity to be opaque? I, I You know, it, it drives me nuts, it has to be said. Um... But anyway, so uh, enough of that. I'm going to sort of uh, clamber off my soapbox now and uh, let's just take a look at today's lineup, shall we? Right, okay, so I've had these samples sat around for, oh, well, obviously five, six years, you know, and, and uh, I've been. Yeah, it, as I keep saying, you know, it's all about trying to sort of shoehorn an episode of the show in and, and I just. I just felt like doing it, you know, so, you know. You'll, you'll kind of have to live with me. Right, so the first bottling we'll be looking at is uh, a bottling called Wheat Fish American uh, Wheat Whiskey, distilled by Glacier Distilling Company, uh, who are based in uh, a, a place called Coram in Montana. Uh, I believe was founded in around about 2009-2010. Um, it's bottled at 45% and it is based on the recipe for Great Northern Brewing Company's Wheat Fish Lager. So I don't know whether they... Um, uh, it's, I don't know whether uh, it's probably not the actual lager because I mean certainly a lot of the other um, uh, spirits that I've tasted that have been based on beer do tend to sort of emit certain things like the hops and what have you. Um, so I'm guessing it's, it's obviously the mash is based on their their sort of blend uh, of, uh, of of grains. I imagine so that should be really interesting. Uh, second bottle we'll be looking at is from Portland in Oregon. This is Westwood Straight Malt Whiskey. Uh, now, this is a single barrel bottling. I don't think they actually do this bottling anymore. It's bottled at 45%. Uh, and like I said, I first tasted this in, in 2015. So uh, certainly looking at their website, they don't seem to imply that they do a single barrel bottling anymore. I, I, whether they're, they're now doing it as a limited edition, I honestly couldn't tell you um, but that's what I've got here in front of me uh, second bottling uh, third bottling we'll be looking at is from uh, Brooklyn in New York uh, this is called um, 
the uh, Van Brunt Still House Single Malt Whiskey, and this is small batch lot number seven, bottled at 42%, like I said, coming from 2015. Don't know what lot they're on at the moment, but they seem to have certainly expanded uh, their range since uh, that time. Uh, so like I said, you know, um, I, I think really this, this tasting is for sort of entertainment purposes only, should we say. Um, the next bottling we'll be move on to is another New York distillery. Uh, I may well pronounce this incorrectly, so uh, please cut me some slack. Um, a Dirondack um, Distillery Company. This is their 601 small batch bourbon. Uh, they're based in uh, Utica in uh, New York. It's bottled at 43.2% and I believe the spirit is aged up to about four years of age and is 100% corn. So could have called it a corn whiskey, but they chose to call it a bourbon. And again, this is it, you know, uh, another misconception is that bourbons can only be made in Kentucky. Well, of course they can't. I mean, as long as, long as you adhere to the sort of like the regulations, you know, 51% corn, uh, brand new American oak, you can, you can, it's a bourbon. So anyway, um, Moving swiftly on, uh, this is yeah, that is indeed this. Uh, this is from uh, uh, a company called uh, Dry Fly Fishing uh, Distilling Company, I believe is their full title. Uh, and this is the Tritical Whiskey, which uh, is a um, a rye wheat hybrid uh, grain uh, that I believe was actually um, created in Scotland. Uh, the distillery itself is found in Spokane in, in Washington and it's bottled at 44% and I think of all of these spirits I think this is the only one you could and possibly still can get here in the UK I don't think any of the others actually have uh, made it over the uh, over the pond as they say and the last bottling is indeed the Strahanans uh, this is the Snowflake uh, bottled at 47% um, now this is quite an interesting, uh, interesting whiskey. Uh, it is um, a minimum, I believe, of, uh, of two years old, uh, aged in. Um, uh, I did have a note of. Uh, oh yeah, two two years in. So I think it's number three charred uh, American white oak, and then finished in a another cask. Now, uh, like I said, this sample comes from 2014, and I think the finishing cask was uh, ex Merlot. Um, and the other interesting thing about this is that it's only available from the distillery and only available uh, for one day in December. I mean, okay, interesting. I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't, know, don't, don't know quite how I feel about that. It's, it's sort of, is it a gimmick? Is it really interesting? I mean, yes, it's going to get you sort of like your, your, um, uh, your fans to the distillery for that particular day. Um, probably didn't happen this year <laughs> or last December, I imagine. But um, interesting concept, I guess. Uh, and certainly um, uh, when I... Uh, I'm not going to say any more, to be honest with you. It's an interesting idea. So anyway, that's today's uh, lineup. I think this is going to be really, really intriguing. So let's kick off with a bit of wheat fish then. <laughs> Right, okay, so let's see what the nose gives us on this end, shall we? That's a lovely nose. Um, it's it's very estuary. I'm getting lots of pear, pineapple, uh, apricot, melon. Again, it's got that sort of like, you know, sweeter, wheaty edge to it rather than a sort of a darker uh, wheatiness. There's a little bit of... It darkens a little bit, I suppose. It gets a little branny. Um, there's a touch of American oak. Um, a little bit of earth. I mean, it's not particularly old. Um, I, I would guess, again, you know, this is probably around about three years, maybe four. Um, but it's wonderfully estuary. It's wonderfully fruity. It's really nice. I mean, there's no, no, no faintiness, no off notes. Um, and, and it has that sort of you know, a youthful intensity, should we say. Anyway, let's see what that's like. It's a little astringent on the finish, a little dry, a little short. 
not quite as fruity on the palate, a little more oiliness, um, a little bit more American. Certainly the oak kind of digs in and bitters a little bit at the finish. Um, I mean, it has it has an underpinning of of of, of that sort of um, estuary pineapple pear peach character that I discovered on the nose, but it was a little bit more hidden beneath the oiliness of the of the actual spirit. Um, and I don't know, I, I liked it. I mean, I thought it was a really good, really good spirit. Um, and 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 you know, sometimes you sort of like uh, you kind of like. I don't mind a bit of a disconnect, I suppose, between the nose, if, as long as I can still pick it up um, or pick up the sort of like the, those kind of main elements. Um, I mean, maybe I would have liked to have seen it a little bit more fruit on the palate, um, a little bit more of that estuary fruit, um, because that's what kind of ticks my box at the end of the day. Um, and, you know, it has a sort of sort of, you know, Mac y kind of character and I suppose, I mean I do tend to sort of mention that and oft, uh, quite uh, often but to me Mac Myra is, is just such a, a, a benchmark and just such a, you know, benchmark kind of characteristic um, that, you know, I do tend to sort of measure a number of, of other spirits kind of against uh, against that, rightly or wrongly, but that's what I do. But So, um, yeah, I, I thought that, that this was pretty good stuff. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the uh, the Westwood. So this is a single barrel, single malt whiskey. Let's see what the nose gives us. Right, yes, it's it's kind of quite young. Um, it's a lot of oak up front. I'm getting a lot of kind of toffee, coffee. And again, it's got a slight, it's got a more corny kind of character. Not a sweet corn, um, but there is that sort of, What's the technical term? Slight fluffiness, um, and um, it's it's got some nuttiness to it. There's pecan. Um, I'm getting a little bit of um, proline, touch of honey. Little. I mean, it's it's kind of developing. Um, I mean, for for a young spirit, it it it's got some character. Um, it has to be said. Um, Although I think a lot of it is kind of coming from the oak, but it's not overly oak. It's not too intrusive. Um, hmm. Let's see what the pulse like. Not quite sweet on on the palate, on the nose. The alcohol is kind of kicking that sweetness a little bit. Um, so it is a little intrusive. It's a little short again, and this is always the problem with with young spirits. They just don't have the length. Um, so you are getting a little bit of bitter oak at the finish. Um, again, I don't think that's an issue. Um, I think it's got a lovely mouth feel. A um, little less of the. Um, oak character on on the palate it's a little bit more supportive so i am getting a little bit more spirit character a little bit more maltiness and a little bit more youthfulness although i'm not getting i'm not getting sort of off the still notes so it's certainly you know um not unpleasant to drink um it's just a little bit on the short side but again that's all down to down to the age of the the spirit so you know i think i think that's uh, that's pretty good <laughs> Right, okay, so let's move on to the Van Brunt uh, Stillhouse uh, bottling. Let's see what uh, what notice is on this now. Now, this is totally different to the, uh, the, the, the Westwood. I mean, completely different. Real chalk and cheese. Um, uh, you would have thought this was a rye. It's really herbal. It's really intense. It's kind of edgy. Um... It reminds me of the Corsair Rasputin, and that was, uh, I think, distilled from a um, a stout mash. Um, and it, although it doesn't have a stouty character, it's that intense, oily, herbal, um, green tea, cardamom, 
little, almost hops, um, and, and so it really does feel like this has been distilled from, from a beer mash. Um, it's a little bit of barley, a little bit of boiled sweets, it's young, it's raw, it's not unpleasant. Again, it's, it's interesting. Um, it's, again, a little bit of oak coming through and getting a little nuttiness, um, touch of honey. It's, yeah, it's interesting. Um, let's see what that's like. Ooh, that's a finish. Um, right, so it kind of kicks off with the oak. I'm getting sort of toffee and, and vanilla, and it's a little bit sort of reserved. And then, so, then, then the the herbaly kind of weirdness kind of kicks in on the mid palate. Um, camphor, bitter rye, um, cedar, uh, toast, um, real oily, almost rye-like notes. Um, Greenwood, you know, it's 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 kind of it's weird, uh, basically. Um, it's weird in a good way, but it's not the sort of thing I would want to drink all of the time. I could imagine sort of like you know having a bottle of this open, thinking, mm, oh, I'm in the mood for something a bit bit left field, uh, you know, and and going for that maybe at the end of an evening, you know, um, because you, you you drink that sort of straight off, and well, you know. I wouldn't say your, your taste buds are knackered, but you know it's 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 got personality, and probably with hindsight, I probably should have put it at the end now. But anyway, um, as I as I was saying to um, you know the, uh, the the the, uh, the the customers that came to last week's um, or uh, no this week's uh, whiskey evening, uh, in fact, you know choosing the the, the lineup the, or the you know the order in which you taste whiskies in is just so difficult. It really is. Um, it's, it's it's hard as kind of matching food and wine. To be honest with you, um, you're kind of thinking, you know, how, how do I lead these along? And sometimes you get it wrong, and you you put a whiskey in the wrong place, and it just doesn't seem to show well. And but anyway, um. I'm kind of uh, waffling on. Um, so, yes, interesting, fun, uh, but I wouldn't want more than one. Oh, God, I'm a poet. Right, okay, so let's move swiftly on to uh, the second of the uh, distilleries that uh, are based in New York. This is the uh, Adirondack uh, Distillery. Or distilling company. First, actually, the first time I encountered this particular distillery, I think it was a vodka. I think that uh, when I was judging world uh, world vodka awards. Um, anyway, uh, that's. I, uh, I just digress. Anyway, kind of typical corn. Um, very corny, oily, heavy, toasty, toasty oak, thick slabs of corn. Um, little young, little spirity. Um, there's a slight herbalness to it, which kind of like, again, sort of like I think, hmm. And certainly when I tasted it blind, I thought, hmm, bit of rye there, bourbon, but in actual fact, there is no rye. So, um, just goes to show, doesn't it, that uh, sometimes these things can kind of throw you a bit of a curveball. Um, a little bit of, a little bit of citrus, a little bit of orange, possibly. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's pretty well balanced. I think it's a like I say, it's a little bit young, a little bit spirity at the edge, um, but you know it's and and yeah, all right, it's 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 very corny, um, but you know what? I suppose for a, if if you're sort of putting it in kind of corn whiskey, if you put if you were putting this in a corn whiskey tasting, it would probably blow most corn whiskies away. It has to be said because there is a lot more going on than your average corn whiskey, which tends to be sort of relatively simple. And yeah, okay, let's uh, see what the parts like. Young, relatively straightforward, corny, a little bit of oak, um, 
It kind of does what it says, I suppose, at the end of the day. You can't argue with that. I mean, it's got a reasonably good length. It's a bit simple. Um, I don't know what it retails for in the States, but I wouldn't have thought this was particularly expensive. Well, at least I hope not. Um, and so again, it's, it's, it's pleasant. You know, there's, there's, there's no fireworks. It's not got the weirdness of the, of the previous bottling. Um, it's just a sort of like a well put together well crafted uh, whiskey at the end of the day and you know like I said if it's not too expensive um, yeah that's not too bad okay so moving on to the critical so uh, rye wheat hybrid let's see what those gives us I'm not getting a great deal actually it's a little bit reserved um uh, now I'm getting some buttery oak, um, chunky, grainy, spicy, little coffeed, interesting, slightly herbal, may, do, does kind of remind me of rye, um, don't get a sort of a particular wheatiness, um, I don't get the sweetness though of say corn for argument's sake, um, it has a, an astringency, a dryness, a spiciness. Um, so, I mean, if I was tasting this blind, I would certainly say, I would say this was a rye whiskey. Um, although there is a slight softness to it. But then, you know, the thing is with rye is that you can have really intense, hard, peppery kind of rye. And you can have softer, kind of slightly more, um, you know, sexier rye I suppose for want of a better word oh sorry I'm being being a bit sexist there oops um um, <laughs> um no so uh kind of coming back to the to the to yeah it's it's an interesting nose um and the fact that it's an interesting uh grain as well you know think well why not you know um hmm so that's right That's got a nice aftertaste. It's actually got quite a good length for a young spirit. Nice kind of spiciness, intensity on the finish. Um, kind of opens up with a little bit more of the oak. I'm getting more of the toastiness, more of the vanillins. Um, and there's a slight burntness there on the edge. It kind of, again, reminds me of, 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 of some bourbons, um, at, which tend to have that slightly burnt corn kind of note. Um, although there's no... It's fun I'm aware there's no corn in here. Um, Ken, another one of throwing a curveball. Um, but and it has that lovely sort of rye-like sort of spice. Again, it's kind of soft. Uh, uh, it's not as intense as say a, a sort of a, a, well, a sort of a high rye con content rye. Um, yeah, I mean I like it. It's fun. It's interesting. And again, it's a sort of like you know, as long as it's not too expensive, I. You know, think this was uh, certainly a, a lovely whiskey to go for. Again, you know, it's got a good length, probably slightly longer than some, but again, there's that bitterness, there's that youthfulness, um, and although, in, like I said, you know, in some cases that sort of you you love that kind of youthful intensity. You have to realise that you know, with that intensity comes certain sort of um, limitations, I guess. Um, and as long as you accept that fact, then 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 great. And yeah, so really intriguing. Right. Okay. And finally, we're on to the Strahanans. Uh, so this is the Snowflake. Uh, and like I said, I think this particular bottling was finished in ex um, Merlot casks. Let's see what the nose goes. Well, that's a bit unusual. Um, I get cider apple, um, cinnamon, berries, um, touch of herbs. There's a slight little astringency there as well, a smokiness, um, a little bit of violet. There's an almost wheatiness as well. I mean, this is a really quite a complex spirit. For, again, it's young, but it's 
I think it's pretty complex. I mean, yeah, you can smell that there is some sort of wine finish going on here because it does have that slight sort of soft, whiny, chocolatey, dark, black fruit, coffee. I mean, that's a lovely nose at the end of the day. Absolutely delightful because, you know, it again, it kind of, it's not all about the, the whininess. There is some intensity from the spirit character and I suppose, again, it's, the youthfulness is kind of in this instance helping it you know because it has that intensity to it um hmm let's see what that's on Oh my god, that really grips on, on the finish. But dear god, that's mouth watering as well. That's fruity. I mean, that is just a, that's a lovely balanced finish at the end of the day. It's got enough intensity of bitter, sort of chocolatey oak tannins um, and juicy fruit. It's probably a little more heavier on the wine cask finish on uh, the palate than it is on the nose. Um, Again, it has a herbalness, so I'm getting certainly getting a kind of like a, a slight rye-like kind of note. Um, so I would assume that the mash bill is probably, um, I, I don't know whether this is this is a malt or if I would guess probably not, uh, not 100% malted barley. I would guess there must be some rye in there somewhere. I could completely be wrong because again, it could be couldn't throw me a complete curveball. It could be the Merlot cast that's given me all that herbal sort of slightly rye kind of notes. Um, but either way, I mean, that's a lovely whiskey. And um, and it shows that sort of, uh, yet again, the distillery is producing some, some well, appears to be producing some really interesting stuff. I mean, I've tasted their, um, I can't remember which other bottling. I have tasted one other bottling. I think it's a kind of standard bottling on a couple of occasions. And one occasion I was really impressed and the other occasion I wasn't. Um, and But, uh, you know, this, this is a thing nowadays, you know, as I'm not kind of, you know, doing the, uh, the the whiskey magazine thing anymore. I don't get the opportunity to try these whiskies uh, anymore, unfortunately. But you know, I have these samples, and um, it's been fun looking back, shall we say? So um, anyway, so coming back to the uh, the snowflake, um, certainly, uh, I think <laughs> I think the term snowflake is a uh, uh, it's a derogatory term for. Um, certain indiv uh, individuals I believe um, it's certainly not a snowflake in that term it's got lovely intensity um, so yeah that's that was really nice Right, okay, so let's sum today's episode of the show. Well, you know, I thought it was interesting. I had, had fun. Hopefully you guys had, uh, had some fun as well. I mean, I know that, uh, um, that for a, a number of you that are watching the show, you probably won't have the opportunity to taste these spirits because they're not obviously available in, you know, your markets. And certainly, like I said, I think the only one that's available in... Um, in the UK is the is the dry fry fishing but you know I think um, I think it just basically goes to show that American craft distillery is very vibrant it's it's producing some really different things it's not bourbon all the time it's not just Kentucky it's not just the same old same old um, and you if you are looking for something a little bit off the beaten track then you know try a, 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 an American whiskey try something slightly different I mean there are I would imagine in all the markets of the world, at least sort of some. Um, so, you know, give them a try. But anyway, um, coming back to today's tasting, uh, Glacier Distilling, I, I really like that. I thought that was a lovely whiskey. Um, you know, the, the, the whole sort of like wheated concept, uh, liked it. Um, nice estuary nose, maybe not quite so much on the palate, but you know, I thought, again, for a young, a young whiskey, really intriguing. Um, the Oregon, yeah, again, um, a very enjoyable whiskey. Um, it's it was pretty young, but it had plenty of character as far as I could see. Uh, you could argue that the alcohol was a little intrusive, a little aggressive, um, but overall, you know, I I wouldn't sort of like have a, an issue with that. Um, uh, the Van Brunt Stillhouse, um, fun. 
f weird. Um, I won't sort of lie to you on that one. And like I said, it's not the sort of whiskey that I think that um, I would probably want too many glasses of, of an evening. But certainly I think if you were to sort of stick that into a tasting, it would certainly sort of raise a few eyebrows. I think it would be a bit of a, a kind of a love-hate kind of thing. Um, but, you know, you you want whiskey with personality and... and you can't argue that it doesn't have personality. Um, the uh, Adirondack. Um, again, yeah, nice, pleasant whiskey. Um, easy going. Like I said, if I don't think it's too particularly expensive, I, I would quite, yeah, that would be a whiskey that I would quite happily drink on a da on a daily basis. Um, I think for sort of like, a, like I said, for a 100% corn whiskey, I think it has, you know, a lot of complexity, um, probably more so than you would expect from a 100% uh, corn whiskey. So yeah, good stuff. Um, the Tritical, yeah, again, another really interesting whiskey. I like, I like sort of different things. It's, it's you know, it's an intriguing kind of um, grain. Um, it certainly has, com uh, you know, elements of rye and wheat. Um, so it's kind of like almost a, a kind of a shortcut from, you know, if you, uh, I don't want to bother sort of putting together a, a kind of uh, a rye wheat kind of uh, mash. Oh, well, I'll just use critical instead. Job done. Um, and yeah, interesting. And I suppose, and the same you could go for the Strahanas. Again, another really interesting whiskey. Certainly unusual. Uh, certainly to me, it was quite an unusual whiskey. Um, and, you know, it kind of worked quite nicely. Yeah, okay, you could argue that the, the wine character was a little on the heavy side. Uh, but again, it all comes down to sort of like the, the age of the spirit. It's not very old, two, three years, probably three years at the very most, I would guess. Um, pretty much like all of them but they they, they they all all of these whiskies kind of share a youthful intensity and and with that youth you have to sort of like um accept there are some limitations at the end of the day um but yeah good fun really enjoyed this week's episode of the show I haven't got a clue what i'm going to be doing next week i'll kind of probably figure that out on thursday i imagine so it gets to that time of the week where i'm thinking what the hell am i going to do at the weekend um but anyway so uh i hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of the show um please keep your comments coming and uh all i have to say is good afternoon and oh it is afternoon uh good dramming <laughs>